Välkommen till Minifuel. You're listening to Minisode 9B of Fjordhammer. Playing you guys in was one final effort from Halo 3, and playing you guys out is going to be Under Cover of Night from Halo 1. Uh, Halo is one of the... I'm, I'm originally a Nintendo fanboy. I grew up on the Nintendo 64 on the Game Boy. Uh, I didn't have an Xbox until the Xbox 360. Uh, but when I did, Halo was, alongside Gears of War, the big franchise for me. Uh, had a lot of great memories about playing multiplayer and playing the campaign in multiplayer on that machine. Uh, so here's a couple of songs from that series that I've really enjoyed. Uh, and on today's episode, I'm going to review The Spear of Shadows, a new book from Josh Reynolds. So, if you guys are hungry for more Age of Sigmar narrative, for more books, listen to what I gotta say about this. On this Fjordhammer book review, we'll go down and check out the Spear of Shadows. Now, what is the Spear of Shadows? It's the first book in a new trilogy by Josh Reynolds. Uh, it's actually called... The Eight Lamentations of the Spear of Shadows. So the Eight Lamentations are these mysterious, magical, godlike weapons. And the Spear of Shadows, obviously, is one of them. Now, this book was released on September 2nd, so this review is about a month late. Sorry for that. And it's another book written in the post-Realmgate Wars setting. So now... With all the new fiction and stuff that's come out, we're really moved on into this new setting, and it's really, really established itself. So if you want a short why should you read this book, A, it's the newest Age of Sigmar fiction, always nice to read. Two, it's the, new, it's the first book in a new trilogy uh, by Josh Reynolds, always a good author for Age of Sigmar fiction, and getting the first book in a trilogy, getting a full trilogy, it's actually the first series that is really connected. We had the Realm Gate Wars series of books, but they weren't really connected. They were more like horse heresy novels, but picked one book from each chapter rather than following a single chapter. So this is going to be the first long storyline outside the campaign books. And also, we meet Grungni. That's right, the god of the Dwarden. We actually meet him, and he talks quite a lot in this book. So, what's this book about? This is a classic adventure tale. Uh, Wayne Volker, a human uh, gunmaster is gathered up by Grimnir, no, not Grimnir, by Grungni, to take on a mission to find his old friend and find this Spear of Shadows. Uh, they gather together a motley crew with uh, different people, different personalities, everyone's a bit snappy, and they go on this adventure to find the MacGuffin. Uh, that's really the plot. Uh it's very, very typical fantasy fair in that sense. It's definitely not a book that will challenge you in in the uh, following of the plot. Um, if you've been missing like adventure books, this is for you. Like City of Shadows, no, City of Secrets, was a great book for the classic. Uh, Inquisitor plotline and the conspiracy plotline. This is a great Age of Sigmar adventure. You know, this this is your I hasn't to say it Lord of the Rings style of book, where it, but, but it is just a band of adventurers going on some crazy mission. And like any Age of Sigmar book, it is it is crazy. Uh, it's really good at using Age of Sigmar as a setting. Uh, it, I felt that it captures the setting again, and it really, 
it's beginning to make Age of Sigmar feel like that living setting, that world that actually exists. Like a book pretty much exactly like this with the level of detail in this book could easily be written for other fantasy settings or the old Warhammer setting. So by if when you're reading this book, you don't feel like Age of Sigmar is a new setting that overall lacks uh, content, which is a great achievement. And it's, it feels very, very good to read this book now. Uh, it's filled with all sorts of weird characters and, and places. Uh, you've got your Caradron mercenaries. You've got fire slayer forts and trees. You've got Skaven with gigantic doom wheels. And you've got a broad cast of characters, both point of view and otherwise. I think that's one of the strengths of this book. Uh, you've got three, three and a half-ish plot lines that are a bit separate, but also converge. Obviously, everyone's uh, searching for these eight lamentations. Uh, these eight lamentations are blades that were forged, not by corn, but by corn's greatest demon smiths. Uh, these are weapons on the level of could could fight Galmaraz type weapons. Uh, pretty much the strongest uh, you'll get in the realms outside of the weapons wielded by the gods themselves. And they are so powerful and so dangerous that, that even Archeon's in on finding these weapons. Uh, so obviously the race is on then. Uh, as these weapons suddenly start reappearing, uh, they've been gone for hundreds of years, you know, the standard sort of tale here. Uh, but now they're resurfacing and everyone's scrambling out to get them. Our band of heroes, which is uh, Wayne Volker, uh, the human gunsmith, Zana, the priest of some sort, uh, tree hugger guy uh, who rides a. Not a griff hound, but the uh, big griff dog thing. A uh, regular human who worships the Sylvaneth. Uh, you got Adima, a vampire blood knight, which is kind of cool. Uh, she's actually the same blood knight from the Nagash, the Undying King book back in the day. Uh, you also have a Caradron uh, pirate, you got Grungni, you got the White Dwarf, and then you've got a cavalcade of villains. Uh, and one of the things that I appreciate with his book and is something that they could, he, he, Josh Reynolds could only do because this is part of a trilogy is have plot lines that don't intersect all the time. Obviously, you've got the good guys who stay together as a band. They meet up and fight a lot of Skaven, who act as sort of the main baddies of the story. But you also get Yudak from one of the older stories that Josh Reynolds also written. Uh, you get a new character, ah Ahazian Kel. Uh, and the Kel name should also be familiar for those of you who've read Play Garden and other... and. Um, Siege of the Black Rift. Uh, so he's bringing together a lot of characters. Even the Skaven characters, I think, have been shown before. And they all have their own plot lines. They aren't necessarily working together, but they're not necessarily working against each other. Uh, especially Kel. He doesn't actually... Well, I'm not going to spoil anything here, but... Uh, his plotline is quite a bit separate, and he's obviously being built up to make a much bigger appearance in the later books, uh, which is a lot of fun. So this book is really, really packed with characters and a lot of good dialogue in between them. And before we move on from this point, highlight here has to be Grungni himself, the Dwarden god. Uh, he's been missing from the from the narrative as far as we are concerned uh, we know that he was with sigmar when sigmar sealed azir uh, but he also sort of disappeared 
somewhere in the timeline. We don't know why. We don't know how. Uh, and this doesn't explain everything, but we do physically meet him. And he is really, really good. He's a sort of a, a melancholic dwarf or dwarden. He's definitely dwarden, but he's also not the stubborn type that you might expect. And he's got this really... I think he encapsulates the sad sense of the Dwarden uh, that you might be familiar with from the old world. Like, if you read about the old world Dwarden Empire, uh, it was sort of, it was a very classic, like, dwarf empire that's crumbling and they're fighting to retake it, but it's really sort of hopeless in the end. But they're proud and they're still strong and all that. And Grungni really encapsulate that melancholic sense of having been stronger than he is, but being proud and still being strong and still being able to fight the good fight in the world. Uh, I really, really enjoyed his parts. And he has an amazing conversation with uh, a minor character partway through the book, which... Uh, might be difficult to follow for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with old world lore and for and uh, familiar with uh, specific dwarf lore. Uh, but for those of you who are, you will really, really, really enjoy this conversation. Uh, so it's worth it's almost worth reading the book just for that. Uh, so moving on, this is obviously a. As I've mentioned, it's an adventure tale. These guys get into wacky hijinks with sky leviathans and giant spiders and all sorts of weird stuff. So it's a very, very fun read. It moves along at a quick pace. Uh, the characters are funny and witty. Like they're not they're not idiots. They're not they don't get into dumb situations because they're dumb. They get into dumb situations because uh, they're greedy or they uh, think things are going well or because they have to take a chance. And it's a lot of fun to read about what they get up to and how they try to get out of it. Uh, so it really it follows that traditional, like you got the hook where you gather all the guys or you introduce the main guy he has to go on a quest for some reason. You gather up the crew, you go on an adventure. It gets a twist at the end of some sort. Uh, I can't tell you why, but this is a trilogy, so obviously they can't wrap up the entire plot in one book. Uh, and then it ends, and it has a, some really good epilogues. Uh, very, a lot more interesting than I was expecting them to be. Uh, so it's really, it's one of those books that you just sort of read for entertainment. Obviously, Age of Sigmar books aren't necessarily high literature. Uh, and this one isn't necessarily an exception. Uh, but this is a, a pure form of fun as a book. It, it's not absurd in, in the way that Play Garden could be. It's not... Uh, conspiratorical it's not trying to be mythical it's just trying to be a fun book and it really really succeeds i think if you if you're a fan of the sort of mid high fantasy adventure type books which there are a lot of so i know a lot of you guys are fans of that uh, definitely pick up this book it is not difficult to get into and it is, it will be worth your time reading just for the entertainment factor. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, it's the first of a new trilogy about these eight lamentations, which I think is a really good sort of plot. Uh, obviously, with the, with the size of Age of Sigmar, you need to find a good hook for a trilogy. Like, you can't have it just be about something that feels insignificant. So it has to be big enough to be meaningful, but not so big that you have to start involving all sorts of crazy players and 
because the gods like Sigmar, Alariel, they're all involved. This is Grungni's sort of way of getting involved in the Realmgate Wars, or one of them. Uh, and I think it really works because uh, this is a is silly, silly setting where one guy with a really, really dangerous weapon is a really big danger to stuff. And here are eight of them, and they fit with the realms, like there's one for each realm, and uh, there's plotting on the bad guy side, like these are corn guys who've made these weapons, uh, but they're actually being a bit clever about them, and the weapons are really, 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 really interesting. They're not just like, can't stab you really fast. Uh, like the Spear of Shadows, why is it dangerous? Because if you throw it, it will always hit its mark. Like, if you run through the realms, if you escape, uh, if you teleport away, it doesn't matter. It will hunt you down and kill you. Uh, which isn't the sort of weapon you would expect a corn guy to forge. And all the other weapons have this sort of similar uh, twist on just being a powerful weapon. Uh, so... As the first of a new trilogy, it's really uh, interesting. And it continues to expand uh, the setting and make the setting feel like something that that would work. Like, you have the Caradron. Uh, they're not big in this book, but they're used in, the, in a way you would expect them. That one of the characters uh, is owed a favor from the captain, and the captain then has to begrudgingly transport them. Uh, it's such a typical fantasy cliche, but it works. And since the captain's a dwarf or a dwarden, uh, it's extra funny because they they argue about how much of a favor is it worth—a full favor, half favor, three quarter favor. Uh, it's it, there's some really fun dialogue in here. Uh, we also get to see. Uh, Alariel worshipping humans which is like you'd ex expect every human to worship Sigmar but here you sort of get to see yeah they're, they mostly worship Sigmar but you have Nagash worshippers, Alariel worshippers, even maybe some Grungni worshippers uh, so this is really uh, it's really making the setting come into its own and obviously in that sense it is an age of reynolds book as i mentioned several of the characters are returning in fact many of them are returning from earlier from earlier reynolds books but you really don't have to have read them uh this story really really works on its own uh, you probably want to know a thing or two about the setting uh, but there aren't any stormcast involved at all. There are no Stormcast in this book, which might actually be a first. Coming off Reynolds' last book, which was a storm Stormcast fest, like every character was a Stormcast except the bad guys, to a book where none of them are. And I think he tackles that really well. And uh, it lets the other sort of characters shine for a bit. Like, what... What is the Ironweld arsenal? We get, don't get the full answer, but we do get some insights into how they work and what they do, since the main character is an Ironweld arsenal character. Uh, so, really just a classic sort of adventure that has a lot of... Honestly, I just think it's a really, really, really fun book. I don't have a lot more to say about it, because... Uh, it doesn't, for me, I don't feel like it tries to be a lot more than a fun, solid adventure. Like, uh, it really does a lot of good things with Grungni. It does a lot of cool things with corn that you wouldn't necessarily expect uh, with these weapons. And it uses the setting really well. Uh, but... Beyond that, it's just one of those adventure books that are fun 
and interesting and have a lot of cool characters in them that you just, you know, you read because you want to relax with your favorite setting or with one of your favorite settings. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, I think I read it in like two days or something. Uh, it's really, it's one of the longer books, but it flows really, really well. So you won't have any trouble reading this. Like it's not, it's not hard to read it all because Reynolds has captured the idea. He he knows what he wants to write here, I think, and or I think he wants to write a ter certain book, and I feel he captures that quite well. And because of that, it just flows so, so well. So what sort of hobby could you get out of this book? I always want to touch on that because I always I always tie my projects up to hobby and or tie my hobby projects up to the narrative and the books are often the best source for that. And the first thing that springs into my mind is a giant doom wheel. Uh, I guess technically it's sort of a spoiler but just saying there there are Skaven here with a gigantic doom wheel. Uh, it's amazing. It's really, really, really fun. It's, And I, I am serious when I'm saying it's gigantic. It is huge. That would be super cool to put on the table. Like, build that. Uh, we also have the Tree Slayers. As a, which is like... It's a Fire Slayer fort, but it's built in a wood, like in a tree city. Uh, so instead of like, uh, well, so all the, the trees are carved with fire slayer symbols. Um, all the walkways are like woven wood, like stuff you wouldn't expect Dwarden to do. Uh, so it's this really interesting clash of aesthetics that I think would make some fantastic terrain on your table. Like, how how can you spruce up your realm of life tables by making it a fire slayer tree fortress? Uh, and with that in mind, mixed order. This this book shows uh, shows order characters fighting together. It shows the weird sort of order characters you can have. Obviously, with the Sylvaneth worshipping humans and the Nagash worshipping humans and the Iron Weld Arsenal working together. Uh, this is a great inspiration place for for starting your mixed order army. Uh, there's also a bit of, of city, as in we get to see Excelsis again, I believe. Uh, the city from the City of Secrets. Uh, so there's a bit of that. There's some cool color schemes, obviously, from the City of Secrets and uh, from all of these. All of these main characters have their own sort of colors, which are pretty cool. Uh, but the thing I think would be best, like if I were to draw one inspiration from this that I would want to make into my hobby, it would be a skirmish campaign. Because obviously here you have four heroes working together against Skaven, against Chaos, against uh, uh, Spider Fang in a campaign that I don't think would be too difficult to like invent at all. And you'd have a really, like, following this narrative would be really cool and really fun because there's some really interesting and surprising situations that they get into and having your sort of war band of four guys facing off against larger hordes in a by using the skirmish rules could be really really cool. I can already imagine like a four or five game campaign following certain parts of this book, and just because that's how easy it is to imagine what you could do with this. Um, but that's sort of my hobby inspiration from this book there's a lot of cool stuff here and i obviously don't know what you'd be inspired of i'd love to get some feedback like if any of you guys have read one of the books and gone i want to do that 
because there's a lot of great stuff in these books. So, rounding out this review, I would definitely recommend this book if you want a straight up adventure, no strings attached, there's no storm cast, there's no absurd over mythical plot, there's just a band of heroes going on an adventure to find a MacGuffin with a twist like there always is in these books. If you like that sort of story, if you enjoy just reading wacky characters, getting it, getting into hijinks, this is a book for you. That's it for this mini-sode. Tune in next week for another segment or go back to find the full episode, which is released monthly. If you'd like more content, check out my YouTube channel, Fjordhammer TV, for videos, uploads of the episodes, and some exclusive content, including streaming. You can also follow me on Twitter at Darth underscore Alec and at Fjordhammer, or on Facebook at Fjordhammer. There you'll find pictures of my work, and I'll be taking feedback. If you prefer to send me a mail, you can do that at fjordhammerpodcast at gmail.com. So until next time, ha de blanc.